Matthias was our big, beautiful boy that was about eight to 10 years old based on his dental exam. And he came in in the May buyout and he had a pretty extensive wound on his right front lateral aspect of his distal limb, his uh, right front leg. Um, we don't know his name yet, but this handsome gentleman is very big. He was too big to fit in our shoot. Um, he has a very large, very old wound on his right front leg. And he is young. Maybe eight, between six and eight. Yes, you're a very good boy. I know. Does this hurt? Yeah. I would love, I would love to give this a try. If we don't have a bony component, he needs surgical revision. He's got proud flesh all around here. Um, let's pull some blood and let's start, let's get some radiographs of this leg. I'm a little concerned about the backside. That being a gas tract. Mm, he like might have it. had a, an initial puncture wound. Mm, it's, uh, it's right there. The yeah. Posterior. Do you want to switch to? Um, can we take one DP or further bar? down? Okay. I don't see anything like super duper catastrophically life ending. Kimberly and Dr. Gina took radiographs of this boy's right front leg. He had a puncture wound and he's got some concerning bony changes that we hope is not bone infection in that leg. But we would really, really like to try with him to save him. Surgical resection of this area is going to be really complicated. This wound is old, weeks and weeks old. And if we have bone infection, we may not be able to save him, but we're not going to give up. We're going to run some blood work on him and hopefully we can get him scheduled for this surgery later this week or early next week um, if he's not a good anesthetic candidate. The aftercare is going to be really challenging because he's essentially not going to have any skin on his whole lateral side of that leg from the knee down, but I'd love to give him a chance. This handsome boy is Matthias. He has a very, very large wound on the lateral aspect of his right front leg that needs surgical debridement. We have gone back and forth with trying to attempt it standing, but because the surface area is so large, it would be really difficult to block the area and have him not feel it. So we are gonna elect general anesthesia. Matthias just came in last week. He is in quarantine. This big grassy pasture is a safe place for him to be induced and recover from general anesthesia. So we're gonna do his surgery out here and have him recover out here. Our goal is just to freshen up the wound edges. He has a lot less proud flesh than some of the ones that we have. So hopefully it'll be pretty quick. I do think it will be pretty vascular. So we expect to have some bleeding. We're gonna clip and scrub that whole leg up and then he'll recover with his leg um, both bandaged and then have a stand, having a standing wrap on there. Here we go, handsome boy. I am using a scalpel to debride the edges of this wound that have kind of healed down and halted the epithelialization process, which is a really hard word to say. Basically, this wound is trying to close itself. We have nice, healthy baby skin, but at some point this wound didn't get the care that it needed and that baby skin kind of healed down to the tissue. Um, we also likely have a biofilm going on where we have bacteria present, so we're gonna really scrub and clean. But the main part of this surgery is freshening up the edges of this wound so we can restart that process of growing baby skin that's gonna hopefully cover over this. Gonna kind of bulk, remove really gross stuff first and then we'll come back and do kind of more. Another clean pass. I'm taking the scalpel blade and kind of bluntly scraping to remove biofilm. So basically this wound was stagnant. It was stuck where it couldn't contract any further because the new skin had healed itself. Corey, was that movement you? Yeah. The new skin had healed itself down to the wound itself. So we are refreshing those edges 
to the level of vital tissue and we're removing what is surely a biofilm of bacteria on the surface. So we basically are like kickstarting the wound healing process back into gear so that it can start shrinking again. This guy is only between six and eight years old and he's got a great personality. He's very respectful. He doesn't seem to be too lame on this leg, although we haven't done full lameness assessment on him. Obviously this wound has been really bothering him and he's gonna have a giant scar here, but if he is comfortable enough, um, even with this big scar on his leg, we're hopeful that he'll have a long, happy life and hopefully even be rideable or be able to have a job. So the next step after clipping is done is to get chlorhexidine and scrub and scrub and scrub and scrub everything. Is this enough or do you want more? You it's want beautiful, Dr. Gina. Let's put more pink chlorhexidine. Here we go. All right, now we basically do our pretend surgical prep because before everything was contaminated. I'm gonna scrub one more time, and then I think we're ready to start bandaging. Look how great this looks. I am rubbing Manuka honey onto the wound. So it kind of makes all the bacteria that are in the area swell with and taking all this, and they bust. It is edible. happy with how everything went. We got to the level of healthy vascular tissue and we've got Manuka honey, some sterile nonstick telfa pads, some roll gauze to absorb um, any bleeding or discharge and then we're going to do vet wrap and then elastic on and then a standing bandage and then we'll check this guy for sure tomorrow. He's going to be on systemic antibiotics and anti-inflammatories and um, Hopefully he won't need more than just this one time of debridement for this wound to finalize its healing process. did a debridement surgery and that went well and he recovered well from that and the wound was healing appropriately. He did not like to keep his bandages on though, um, so that made it a little bit hard to keep the flies out of it. And then he had a teeny tiny lip droop but it was symmetrical and he could still apprehend his food and eat grass and things like that when he first came in so um, we just kind of made a note of it, a mental note of it, but didn't see any other concerns with him with that. And then when he was down here for his wound treatments, um, we noticed that every time we brought him in to do his hydrotherapy and topical treatments and things like that, and just even out in the pasture, that he just seemed to not be normal. And then his lip started to droop and deviate to the right, which is a neurologic sign. It could be the facial nervous damage or it could be something else more going on in his central nervous system. And then also he started to have a really um, paralysis versus paresis pectoral, his right pec would just kind of flop and he could no longer contract it and release it for normal ambulation of his limb. And he also started crossing over in his hind limbs and he just started losing weight. And then when we started to give him treats that last week when we had the um, discussion about taking samples to send off, we noticed that when we would hold treats for him, he could no longer use his lips to pick up food and he would turn his head to the side and try and use his tongue. And so it was evident that he was no longer able to eat appropriately or apprehend food into his face like he's supposed to. So that also leads to the muscle wasting and the poor body condition score. So we were really worried about him. So we decided to take um, samples, a serum and a CSF or a central spinal fluid to send off for EPM testing or equine protozoal myeloencephalopathy, which is caused by a protozoa that is carried in possums and they defecated out and then horses eat in the area where they defecate. They don't actually eat the feces, but 
the protozoa come out of the feces and get on whatever they're eating, the grass and stuff like that. And horses are a dead end host. They cannot transfer it to other horses. It gets into the nervous system and it moves through the nervous system, which is what causes the variable nervous system signs that we see, the neurologic signs. So it kind of does whatever it wants because it's a living thing moving around inside the horse's central nervous system. So it can show up in variable signs and it is treatable. Um, there are three different FDA approved treatments on the market. There's uh, Marquis, Proazil, I think is what it's called, and Rebalance. And two of those are like $1,500 to $2,000 a month, depending on the size of the horse and how much you have to give them. Marquis is a 28 day dose. So it, that one's usually the top recommended because it's only one month, but it's the most expensive. And then the other two are one to three months or until clinical symptoms can resolve, but sometimes horses have the permanent damage for the rest of their lives. And um, some horses, it's subclinical, and then all of a sudden it shows up like in Matthias's case, like he just had the droopy lips, and then all of a sudden he had all these extensive concerning neurological symptoms. And if we had caught it, sooner and knew his history, then he would have had a better prognosis long term. But because it had progressed to the point where he could no longer eat, even with treatment, there is no guarantee that he would regain the function of those muscles to be able to eat appropriately. And a horse his size, losing that much weight and becoming weak and not being able to enjoy being a horse, it was just a, a very grave prognosis for him and it would be unfair to keep him alive just to try and keep him alive. He would have wasted away to nothing and that would not have been fair to him. So unfortunately, we gave him the last act of kindness because it had progressed to such a severe state that even treating him with the appropriate FDA approved drugs would not have resolved the symptoms he had. The horses sometimes just are at such a state already that there's nothing else we can do to increase their quality of life.